good morning my friends we'll start leak testing though i had one video before you can see this as extra extra as in this book leak testing a leak is the unintended transfer of fluid through a barrier technique basic lt techniques include bubble solution airborne ultrasonic or acoustic voltage discharge pressure and pressure change ionization conductivity radiation absorption chemical based halogen detector radio isotope and mass spectrometer principle the principle of leak testing involves physics of liquid or gas flow flowing through a barrier where the pressure differential or capillary action exist so calibrated reference leaks are available for some techniques to qualify the rate of leakage means that much leak you get so that you can compare with others that is the whole base behind that laser testing holography and serography <clears throat> it is the last application that is focused for holography and serography more imagine then the relative strain or sample under changing stress may indicate discontinuities at or below the surface destructive interference of laser light holography and serography both use the destructive interference laser light to produce a test signal serography system direct laser light and a searing ams interferometer along the same optical but holographic system using the beam splitter do not have the same electrical path which makes them more susceptible to environment vibration and thus limits their industrial application vacuum chamber technique for providing pressure differential across leaks during bubble test Aircraft rotor inspection, serogram of dispon, and portable vacuum serography. So this is the problem there. Serogram of a dispon. Relative strain, serography and holography provide direct measurement of the discontinuity dimension, signal to noise ratio. out of plane z axis in deformation the strain of the function of strain and strain as a function of stress benefits of laser testing advantage of serography and holography include the field inspection ability and high throughput in addition these techniques are non contact and chemical liquid free liquid free laser based inspection techniques in inner inherently have higher initial cost but holography and serography have found applications in the aerospace industry <coughs> sorry for example the testing of composite panels and controls surface in serography and holography as with other non destructive test methods proper reference standards are important for the development development of the non destructive test procedure vibration analysis vibration signature so these are the vibration signatures bone gear signature and frequency plot waveform so locally mechanical noise is a characteristic that help distinguish it from acoustic emission signal a crack a machine vibration signature contains a significant amount of information about its health and operation condition monitoring
therefore commonly analyze either the amplitude or the frequency content of the machine vibration so the highest peaks are the problem just they just there is a threshold limit if it cross they count it machine will count it and gives the information so sometimes multiple data sets are collected and analyzed then monitor for a change for a change in acoustic signature over time we refer to as a trending analysis sensors the sensors which may be accelerometer piezoelectric transducer linear vibe variable displacement transducer id current probe subjected to periodic repeating and random transient vibration energy propagating to it many variables including the sensor type mounting method and location control with the transducer de detects it is common for test signal frequencies above 1 kilohertz to go undetected when using a handheld accelerometer probe because most sensors only detect motions in one direction it is common to take readings in more than one axis axis for example 90 degree apart from the bearing this data display raw data is graphically viewed with a time as the x axis and the signal amplitude as the y axis transient and non sinusoidal events that is not resembling a mathematical curve that describes a smooth repetitive oscillation can be identified with a time based analysis <coughs> because both amplitude and frequency content of the signal may be potential interest a first fourier transform may be performed so that the data spectrum may be analyzed in the frequency domain so that is x axis is the frequency and the y axis is the amplitude a fourier transformation transform decomposes a time based signal into the frequencies that make up make it up so different frequencies different this it pick it picks must take a musical chord can be divided into amplitude or loudness of the constant constant notes frequency based analysis useful for identifying regular periodic events such as impacts the rule of thumb is that the displacement is the key for low frequency signals less than 5 hertz less than equal to 5 hertz velocity is the one key for frequencies up to 2 kilohertz and the acceleration is primary interest that frequency is above 2 kilohertz this rule is not absolute though the choice of analysis method ultimately depend on the application spectroscopy this is the last one so acoustic spectroscopy electron spectroscopy for example x ray photo electron spectroscopy or logar electron spectroscopy are generally laboratory based techniques while well, electromagnetic mechanical techniques find a common industrial application mechanical spectroscopy techniques include process compre compensated regional resonance testing pcrt and bond testing for example mechanical impedance analysis resonance and pitch catch modes absorption in spectroscopy observes the wavelength dependent attenuation of radiation passing through the sample for example spectral remittance of a light filter emission spectroscopy observes the frequency content of the radiation produced by specimen such as spectral irradiance of the light source raman spectroscopy studies the inelastic scat scattering of laser light which offers insight into the types of chemical bonds present in the sample lastly fluorescent spectroscopy studies the wavelength depend on excitation excitation preference of the fluoroscope fluorospore or studies with the wavelength and emitted by the fluorospore during fluorescence x-ray fluorescence spectroscopy positive material identification pmi for example employs x-ray fluorescence spectroscopy X, uh, xrf is the based on the principle that low energy x-rays the gamma rays can be electronically excite the sample material and induce fluorescence 
incident radiation is observed by the sample and inner cells electrons are ejected as photoelectrons. I discussed in section this observing atoms backfill the now empty position. So when inner cell electron is removed, the next one excess energy comes from the X-ray photon. So the next electron moves to new position, then X-ray photon is coming. So the fluorescent fluorescent electromagnetic radiation in this case comprises X-ray photon, which is a wavelength longer than the incident excitation photon. X-ray photon wavelength indicates the source element and the number of photons detected in the given time. That is the count rate indicates the relative concentration of the detected elements. X-ray fluorescence spectrometry used a detector that separates and identifies energy wavelengths or intensities. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, gentlemen. Stop here.